Once we have talked about the basics of Java, it's time to move towards some concepts. Now, at the start itself, we have mentioned that Java is object-oriented programming. Now, what do you mean by object-oriented programming? So when you talk about object, in real world, everything is object, right? In fact, if I'm using a, a pen, that's an object. If I'm using a mouse, that's an object. If I'm using a cello tape, I don't know why I have cello tape on my table, but that's an object, right? So everything around you is an object. And the weird thing is, in the programming world, even they treat humans as objects. But that's fine. Everything is an object. Now, everything has two things. In fact, every object has two things. An object knows something, an object does something. Example, let's say if we talk about this pen. This pen is an object, right? So this pen knows something. So when I say knows something, it simply means it has some properties, some physical properties, right? You can see this pen, right? So we have a, a color for this pen. I'm very bad with colors, by the way. But we have a color for this pen. There's a height. Uh, there's a kind of pen. It also has a brand. I'm not sure which company pen it is. Oh, it doesn't matter. So th there are some properties for a pen, right? And the same way, if we talk about this uh, this remote, okay, this is this has some properties: height, color, uh, the number of buttons. So this is what a, a, a remote knows. And also, a remote does something. Example: I can on my AC by pressing some button. So it has a behavior as well. So basically, every object knows something. Every object does something. And that's what we are going to create in Java as well. Now, whatever project you are making, you will be having uh, different objects. Now, specific to Java, from now, it's, it's also about thinking, okay? So it's not just about coding something. Even when you start making something, in your mind, you have to treat everything as an object. Example, let's say if you want to add two numbers, the first thing you should, which should come to your mind is, okay, I need an object which can add two numbers. I'm getting my point, right? Everything, you have to think in an object way. So if you come back to programming, if you look at this example, of course, we don't have an object here in this code, uh, but you have to remember, whatever you want to do, you have to do with the help of object. So what we have dis discussed till now is there's a concept of object-oriented programming. So basically, we have certain things here. We have a concept of object, and uh, this object will have a property, and this will have behavior. So every object will have a property and they also have a behavior. The properties can be multiple properties and multiple behaviors. Uh, example, let's say if I, as a human, if I'm an object, I know something. I know a lot of things. I know how to talk, how to walk, how to dance, how to uh, type code, right? And I behave based on what I know. So I can dance because I know how to dance. So that's your property, but you know how to dance. That's a behavior when you're dancing, when you're talking, when you're walking, right? So I know my age as well. I know a lot of different. So whatever I know here is properties. What I, what I do is behaviors. Okay, but how do we create objects? So in, in Java, if you want to create an object, we have to first create a class, okay? Now why we need object and class concepts? So first of all, we have talked about object Everything has to be done with the help of object. In real life, we can't do anything without objects. So that's how it works. So in, J in Java as well, if you want to do something, you have to create an object. But how will you create an object? And who creates the ob this object? So let's talk about it. Now, if you talk about the concept of object, who creates object in real world? Example, let's say if you talk about this table where, I'm with, where I have my systems. Now, this table is created by a carpenter. Okay, so when you go to a carpenter by saying, hey, I want a table, carpenter will say, okay, uh, I will give you a table, but t tell me the exact dimensions. Okay, uh, maybe uh, the carpenter, the actual guy who is making this table, he's very technical. So we have to explain in technical details. And that's why we have some person in between who says, Okay, you give me the details. Okay, I will forward it to the carpenter. So basically, you give the details to the to that person, third person, and then that third person gives a detail to the carpenter, because carpenter understands on technical details, and you understand on the lay, lay terms. I can say, hey, I want a table where I can keep my computer, where I can keep my uh, monitors, my keyboard, mouse, uh, mobile phone, and all the all the different things which I have on the on the table here. So that person, the middle person, will explain everything to a technique, the carpenter. Okay, that's the dimension a person wants. Uh, this is the height which I want. Based on my height, I want this table to be. And uh, so all the details, right? So got the point. So how do you give that design? So as a normal person, you give a design in a particular way. 
And in programming, you can give that design in a class file. So you have to create a class file which will act as a blueprint for the carpenter or, or for, the, for, the, for, the, for someone who can create object for you in Java. Now, who creates objects in Java? It is your JVM. Again, what is JVM? What is JRE? We'll have a detailed discussion there. But at this point, understand this. We have a JVM who will say, okay, it's my job to get the object, but you give me a blueprint. Okay, so basically you create a class file. Now this class file gets compiled to create a bytecode. Now that bytecode goes to the JVM and that's where you get the object. But how do we create classes? How do we uh, create object of those classes? That we'll see in the next video.